This video is gonna get a lot of people pissed at me, huh? Oh, hello there. This might be a little cliche for the opening of a YouTube video, but it's still true. I had no intentions or plans to make another partner video to my queer analysis, at least so soon. I vaguely expected I need to make a final rumination of those themes and my claims in said video once Deltarune was done, in however many years that eventuality would reveal itself. And yet, here I am. You may ask why, and the answer is relatively simple. I have a bit of a ship on my shoulder because of a certain video. Now, out of respect for the person behind that video, I will not be talking about them or their video. I will, however, very subtly put the video's thumbnail and title on the screen so there can be no confusion about who I'm talking about. I will also make sure it's the only thing on the screen so you don't get distracted by anything else. Don't worry though, I'll pin a comment telling you not to harass anyone I mentioned in the video. I will also not be crediting it in the description. Wouldn't want to boost it in the algorithm, would I? But seriously, don't go attack or harass anyone mentioned in this video, alright? Anyway, now that I've had my scent of being petty, let's move swiftly along to what I actually want to talk about. And that's something I didn't talk about particularly in depth in the queer analysis, mostly because I thought it was pretty common knowledge and almost entirely besides the point of the video. In short, if the question is queer rep in Daltroon, the answer would be YES! Deltoon and Undertale are games whose worlds are fundamentally ones of queer joy. As far as we can tell, there is no homophobia. In fact, for every straight relationship presented in these games, there is at least one queer one to match it. This is not something that needs to be discussed, as it is indisputable. Furthermore, the trans and envy characters get a similar treatment. Naps to bloke, monster kid, and the humans always have their pronouns respected. There is no instance of them getting misgendered or questioned about their real gender. Same goes for Metaton and Mew Mew, who, after their transition into their new identities, are met with nothing but respect. The monsters in these games live in a world where the pitiful concerns of homophobia, transphobia, etc. are not necessary, where they might as well have not existed. In truth, the world of Deltrune is undeniably a sort of queer utopia in many ways. When Chris goes outside, they seemingly do not need to worry about being dead-named or misgendered by the people around them. They don't have to worry about weird looks or harassment. They don't have to deal with the heartbreaking prospect of well-meaning people, friends, family, neighbors, not understanding them or their needs. And that's... great. Really, it is. It's absolutely wonderful to have a story with queer characters, where they're allowed to bask in that rare luxury, where they are accepted and happy and dysphoria is low on the list of their problems, compared to stopping the roaring or the possession of an eldritch entity. It is wonderfully cathartic after a life's worth of experiencing nothing but the opposite. It's both hopeful and empowering, seeing a world not too unlike ours where queer folks like us get to be happy and respected for us, where we don't have to conceal our existence for our safety and ease. It reminds us what we fight for, what we can achieve if we work hard and we work loud and we work together. It's cheesy, but it's true. Noelle can have her cute crush on Susie and her father is all gung-ho about helping her without the slightest ounce of judgment. Where Naps will look despite their timidness can have their needs accommodated and respected without needing to fight for it. Where Chris can just be Chris to everyone. Their family, their friends, their teachers, their pastor, and their neighbors. Where they don't need to fight to be Chris. I mean, as long as you ignore the... Yeah, that. And many people love that. Many people become strongly attached to the queerness inherent to the world of Deltrune and Undertale. As is true of any utopia of any sort, many people revere it and wish its mechanisms to apply to their own lives. But of course, that's not the world we live in. Quite the opposite, actually. In our world, it's a fight to be different. We have to assert ourselves, to shake ourselves free of the strings of expectations that held us down before. Where we have to do this over and over and over and over and over or else we hold our heads down with our teeth clenched tight in silence, and let it all wash over us until we lose ourselves among the waves of what they call us. And it's tough, and it's disheartening, and for far too many, it's too much. It takes a lot of determination to get kicked down again and again by the world and still be you. Stand up tall despite it all. Doesn't that sound familiar, huh? Regardless, it's not just determination alone that keeps us going. It's our community, the people we know will have our backs no matter what. Our friends, our families, the people that understand our pain, either through their empathy or through their own similar experience. Those people that reaffirm to us we are not alone, 
that while the world may be a dark place, a painful place, that despite it all, there are people around you who care about you for you, no matter what. And this bittersweet feeling of perseverance despite the odds, this feeling of togetherness through shared experience and pain, is the backbone of pride. Those are the ideas, the ideals and emotions woven into the colorful flags that are flown in June. They have in them the spirit of survival of the diverse generations of queer folk who lived and died to be themselves. Toby Fox's world is one without their apparent suffering, without those insurmountable trials. It's a fluffy world where Noelle can have her cute fling with Susie without the baggage that normally carries. And that's good. That's wonderful, even. But it's not the entire picture of the queer experience. It's only the happy side, the cute and wholesome and rare moments that shine so bright in our lives. But those moments can only really shine so bright because of the darkness that surrounds them. And that's why so many people drench their favorite Toby Fox character in their preferred color of the rainbow. Because in those colors are the admittance to the hardship our community has faced. By making Chris wear the envy flag colors, when Noelle paint her cheeks lesbian, we project those struggles onto them. We make it so when they hold up those colors and smile in genuine joy, that smile is backed up by the admittance that they too have suffered those same struggles and persevered and now revel in that survival, that joy that proves they took the brunt as we did and are still standing despite everything. Many folks might never have the opportunity to do that, and many more may not have the strength or courage or simply aren't ready to do that in reality. But by making art or consuming art of these personally beloved characters flaunting their pride without shame, they can experience that personal joy vicariously through them where that joy may feel so unreachable in reality. It reminds them and encourages them to be strong and to strive to do the same, to present their truth with reckless abandon and confidence usually reserved for those considered normal. And no, it's not giving these characters any sort of special treatment because they're queer, whatever that even means. At least not anymore they would be having discussions about how a character's cultural background influences them, I ask you to consider why someone telling you to be respectful about our character's Muslim or Jewish background would be any different than someone correcting Chris's pronouns. It's simply another aspect of the character that warrants respectful discussion and exploration. Furthermore, it's also a big reason people write stories or share headcanons that pertain to particular aspects of the queer experience. Case in point, I myself can make a good example of this. If the opening scene of Stolen Identity is Chris coming to the realization of their envy identity through being met with the binary gender choice of a character in a video game, and being stumped. And this is a somewhat common, if admittedly minor, struggle envy folks are faced with pretty regularly, and one I myself can personally relate to. It makes them feel all the more legitimate and real as a character once we establish those small struggles we also share in reality. It makes this Chris I write an intensely personal and passionate version of the character to me and I hope to others as well. Of course, these sorts of experiences are far from universal. Many more people won't care or like these highly personal, queer interpretations of these characters. Many Noel fans, including me, love the highly realistic and tragic ongoing story of Angel Wings, despite how it rejects the ideas of a queer utopia set up by Toby Fox. But for many fans, they might not be interested in seeing those particular struggles. Some people come to these games and care only about different aspects of the narrative. Maybe they care about the gas or shenanigans going on behind the scenes, or the ongoing mystery of the night and the roaring, or maybe they just want a good old-fashioned laugh at the dumpster man. And that is more than fine. Everyone is entitled to their taste, and no one should be forced to engage with headcanons they dislike, or have no interest in if they don't want to. But we must remember to not attack others over wanting to make what they want to make. It's always important to remember that we can always simply not engage with something that doesn't appeal to us. There is no point in interacting with a fan work you don't like just to harass the person behind it that accomplishes nothing except making everyone involved miserable for no reason. Recently, the AU comic Alter Heaven was completely cancelled and its creator deleted many of their social media accounts due to harassment they received as backlash to the comic. What did they do that was so heinous? From my understanding, it was a single sprite in the comic that caused some people to think there was going to be a Noel and Birdly romance. Yes, that's right. That one sprite you're looking at, that was all it took. Of course, that was never the intention of the author, but that didn't stop the harassment. Needless to say, the backlash was disproportionate and unnecessary. Instead of simply ignoring something they might not have been interested in and moving on with their lives, 
people in this fandom and in the wider internet space have the tendency to attack and harass people they disagree with or who they think have done something wrong. And it's really harmful sending death threats and horrid accusations over an AU comic or a fanfic or a video without knowing the full perspective of the other side is absolutely ghoulish. Don't do it under any circumstance. When I see a fic with he, him, Chris, or she, her, Kara, for example, I simply choose not to read it. No offense meant to the writers and artists behind these works, of course. I'm sure many of those are interesting and well realized in their own right, but that's simply not something I'm interested in consuming. I'm not going to go in there and chew out the artists for not doing things the way I like them. I'm not going to go and correct them. That's silly. Like I said, that accomplishes nothing except making everyone involved miserable for no reason. Of course, this is not me telling you to simply stay quiet when you see someone misgendering Chris, Frisk, or any of the trans or NB characters in these games. Quite the opposite, actually. We suffer in silence and obscurity. The less people fight for this simple recognition, the less we assert ourselves and our peers, the more we normalize the practice of disrespecting us. We NB folk are already often seen as crazy or confused or something like that. Unworthy of respect, in short. Remember back when Undertale first came out? Every Let's Player, every reviewer and analyzer simply going with their gut and calling maps a book a he? I know and me and many others didn't know about MB folk before Undertale, which of course would lead to this confusion and miscommunication. It feels like the world has really changed since then. And the big reason for it is because people have been fighting for it. People have gone out of their way to drench Naps book in the envy colors whenever they can. People have tried to inform people unawares and correct people when they make a mistake. And it's easy to see this and think it's meaningless, worrying so much about how people treat fictional characters. To think it changes nothing, it doesn't matter. But it does. It matters a lot. NB characters are very much interacted with in the same way as real flesh and blood NB folk in a lot of ways. Usually, most people will look at them and pick a gender that they think fits best in their head. I don't fault them for it, that's what they've been conditioned to do. And it's hard to unlearn. Regardless, people will stick with their first impression until informed and corrected. Upon which, if they're reasonable, they'll admit their mistake and try to be better in the future. Or, you know, they'll go on an angry rant about world culture or whatever. But the point is, by normalizing a more reasonable behavior, it not only impacts how people treat these characters, but also how people treat us. Civilly correcting people when they make a mistake is good. However, you need to know how and when to pick your battles, folks. If you see someone misgendering Chris, don't chew them out or anything. If you see some YouTuber making a mistake, don't be rude or harass them in the comments. Please stay civil. And when, because it's a matter of when, not if, you encounter someone so vehemently opposed to the concept of correcting themselves, or the concept of Chris being NB or whatever, just disengage. There's no need to fight back, no need to argue with someone who is clearly not interested in listening. Same goes for content creators who refuse to change. You can always simply disengage and go watch or read something else. Getting seriously upset about this is not the right way to go. Remember, the only way to win an online argument is to go outside instead of getting into one. And this constant conflict, constant confusion in the fandom, is a direct result of the way in which Deltrun handles its queer, but particularly trans and rep. There is no singular correct way to do queer representation. There are different ways to do it, certainly. Deltarune has taken the approach of normalization, where it needs not be commented on in the universe. It's a very common approach. Saying it's great representation is just not something I would agree with completely. Simply because of the manner in which it can be so easily misinterpreted, missed, denied, and debated. Don't get me wrong, this isn't the fault of Toby or Deltarune as a whole. Toby clearly likes to write queerness subtly into his stories with the character conflicts being totally divorced from queerness for the most part. Unless my reading was intentional, in which case it is only subtextually linked. As I said, it's a queer utopia, and that's good. There's a place for those kinds of stories. And yet, when people make an effort to highlight the queerness in the world of Deltarune, to celebrate it and cherish it, they are almost always rebuffed in some way. People interrogating them about the validity of their joy, people being mad about it, and people who don't like that they're not doing it like Toby Fox and keeping it subtle, quiet, and on the down low. And that... That irks me. Especially when it's from other queer folk. 
If it's just his head people being silly and doing the classic, I don't mind the gays as long as they keep it to themselves, that'd be one thing. But hearing that kind of rhetoric from fellow queer folk is distressing. Wanting queer rep to only be subtle and easy to ignore all the time is unhelpful for the community as a whole. It shuts out and silences queer voices and queer stories and replaces them with safe, tokenized garbage in the name of avoiding false diversity. If we only have representation that's safe and subtle, and that the cis hegemony can use to point to tell us, look, you got gay people in the Disney film, what else do you want? That is when we become tokens. Boxes on a corporate checklist. We do not become tokens when we attach to our favorite characters and talk about how we see ourselves in them. We are not forced diversity when we're loud and proud and queer in what we make. If we keep yielding to people complaining about woke misdrawing video games or forced diversity, I think we all know the eventuality we reach. People who complain about the wokeness in media aren't worried about whether the representation is good or bad or forced or natural or any of those things. They only care that it's there at all. And while their main target is trans folks right now, Make no mistake that this same rhetoric will move on to any sort of gay representation in anything soon as well. Hell, we've been seeing it happening for years now! Remember the outrage about the two second gay kiss in Lightyear? Remember how people exploded in anger at The Last of Us 2? Remember the recent, well it's not recent anymore, review bombing of that New Horizons game, or whatever it was called, for having one gay character? In conclusion, no. You are not one of the good ones. You will not be passed over for being nice and quiet and following the status quo like a good little queer. You may think you're not like those bad queers who are loud about the injustices they face and about their own queer experiences and expressing their queer joy and shoving it down people's throats. And you're not. You're merely a crab in a bucket, pulling down the people that understand the danger. To the people pushing this narrative, you're just another degenerate. Another crab to be boiled, only better than the others in so far as you can keep making sure the other crabs can't escape the bucket. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm being much too harsh, but I hope you understand. I'm just tired of people getting heated over this. Over a 16-bit sprite of a human in a green shirt possessed by an eldritch presence and the word used to describe them. If you take anything away from this video at all, I hope it's that you learn the importance of this engaging. By all means, let people know if they make a mistake, but do not harass them or assume their actions are in bad faith. And if they don't want to hear it, simply abandon the conversation. If you see something you don't like, don't go down in the Reddit comments and attack them for it. Either ignore it and move on with your day, or interact in a civil manner if you must. I can't control your actions, but I can only instill in you this wise proverb. If you are arguing with someone on the internet, You've already lost. Anyway, I have one last thing to say, and it's aimed at the person I have no doubt will eventually watch this. Once again, you will go unnamed, but I imagine you know who you are. I'm sorry that you went through what you did. Facing the wrath of a phantom is very hard, I know. But I hope you reflect on how you approach the situation. I understand why you found it suited to do what you did, but lashing out in accumulated anger at a group of people who seek only peace and joy Instead of simply clearing up your mistake and avoiding this was, in my opinion, irresponsible. I hope you think about what I've said here today. Despite my sass, I do not consider you an enemy, and I hope we can come to an amicable agreement. If you ever want to talk, my Discord is here, and my Discord server is in the description. Anywho, before we end off this video, I want to make good on the title. I want to take a little while to explain why Chris is so important to me. Not only to help illustrate the importance of this sort of character and of career joy, but also just because I want to. And you're in too deep to leave now, so buckle up! It all started in the far off year of 2017. Or maybe it was 2018? Yes! Maybe it was 2019. Whatever. Point is, it was sometime between 2017 and 2020. The main thing I want to highlight is that this was around the time I got into Undertale fanfics. Particularly, the one I want to highlight is... Two Worlds. Although, if I may be honest, I think the timeline with this one is also a little fucky. And it being a big driver in my queerness is still true. 
The fact of the matter is that it was through interacting with Undertale fan content, particularly fanfics and exactly like this one, that I learned of many important concepts you just don't learn in school, or at least I do. Concepts like transness, gender fluidity, and most of all, non-binary gender identities, which are often highlighted in the characters of Frisk and Kara, sometimes even maps with Monster Kid. I remember having quite the reactions to these concepts at first. Dang, I thought. It sure would be cool if I could be envy like these characters. I wish I could be not a boy or grill. I was such a tiny fool back in the day. Thankfully, after a few years of turmoil, I finally got myself sorted out. What does this have to do with Chris, you may ask? Well, if I may be honest, after Chapter 1 of Dark Moon came out, I was... not very interested. Okay, that's not entirely true. I was just not as into the game as Undertale. None of the characters particularly stood out to me, other than Lancer, who was funny, and the story felt less interesting, and the cliffhanger served more to confuse and frustrate me than excite me. And when it came to Chris, I had no particularly strong feelings about them. In them, I just saw a vehicle for the cliffhanger I didn't like, and it didn't feel like there was that much depth at the time. It also didn't help that at the time of Chapter 1, most fanworks didn't delve too deeply into Chris's queerness, or even the queerness of Deltrune, you know, as a whole. Most fics during the Chapter 1 days were, well, let's just say the most popular one was the Minecraft Girlfriend comic, right? The only one that really explored these things, at least that I knew of, was Paper Trail, which is a classic, and I highly recommend, even if it is outdated, and the ending is far from graceful. And then... Toby began the 6th anniversary livestream, where he played Deltrune Chapter 1 with the three dads. I was hooked. I knew, god damn it, I knew! I knew there was going to be a tease for Chapter 2 at the end, and I was dying, because that stream was like 5 hours long, and it was happening well through midnight in my time zone, so I had my eyes glued to Twitter, and live tweeted the event. And it was during it, or was it after? It might have been after. Regardless, I found a particular tweet that stuck with me. Alas, I can no longer find it which helped me finally get Chris. I finally understood their deal, so to say, as well as the deal of the rest of Deltarune. And so I went into Chapter 2 with that newly gained appreciation and thoughtfulness, and it heightened the experience tremendously. I finally started to grab onto the relatable aspects of Chris's character and their situation, which would eventually culminate in the video you all know me for. But that wasn't the only thing. If you remember the wake of Chapter 2, you remember the backlash and conflict about Chris. You might recall this legendary tweet. I know I do. First of all, this is simply an absolutely riotous tweet. But I also remember the outrage around it. So many people were arguing about it. You know, the same old tired responses. Self-insert this, but Toby said that. Exhausting shit like that. And seeing all this, it hit home. You have to understand, this is 2021. and rep was a dime a dozen particularly in any big profile series. Practically the only other NB character I knew of at the time outside of UTDR was Double Trouble, and the Deltrude and Shira fandoms are not at all alike. So seeing the backlash really shook me. It felt like all the world's anti nb sentiment, which I had felt for a while, had crystallized itself. The very idea of an NB character enraged so many. So many were so insistent on it being unimportant and up for debate. And if that was how people treated a simple instance of rep, they were so resistant to this new idea. What shot did I have to combat that? And then I remembered. I wouldn't take it lying down. And from that point on, I decided to fight for me and my fellows wherever I could. I would fight, if needed. And that is why I attached so strongly to this strange little gremlin human, with a knack for knives and piano and gaming and playing pranks. The rebellion inspires my own, and entices my imagination. Every time someone insists that they're a self-insert, 
simply a character meant to be interpreted because of course they would be, right? They then pronouns are fake, they only exist for vagueness. They're not valid identities for these characters to hold. Every time someone says they're tired of seeing Chris being put on a pedestal for being NB, and people like me celebrating it, I get more and more determined to be loud and proud. It also doesn't help that they're just what would happen if my gender was wrung out of me, put into a cup, and then sculpted into a pixel human form. I think that may just be the biggest reason, actually. Maybe I should have just led with that. Oh well. To compensate? Think fast! Chris Jenner will be upon you. Well, that's the end of the video. I hope everybody enjoyed this. This was quite an effort to create. I was quite busy a lot of the time while making this, so that's one of the big reasons it took so long. But it would have taken longer were it not for my new editor. Doc, say hi to Doc. This is my new editor. He probably will continue to edit some more stuff in the future. So I'll be get used to him. Look, 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 look at her go. Look at her go on the little skateboard. Wow! Is that a flip? Look at what they did. They just did a flip. Incredible. Good job, Doc. Gold star. Anywho, uh, if you wanted to support the channel, we have a Patreon, which will be down in the description, right alongside our Discord server, which you may also enjoy joining if you are so inclined. Well, now I'm just rambling all the time. Uh, be sure to like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, maybe watch some other videos of mine. Now that that's done, I'm... I'm done! That's it, that's it for this. Uh, this is the end of the video. Bye-bye.